Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Exodus 19. In the third month, three months later, after the Exodus, when the children of Israel were going forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day, so this is about the third month, the 14th day, same day, they, yeah, they came into the wilderness of Sinai. For, their, uh, for they were departed from Rephnim. And were come to the desert of Sinai. There's a wilderness of Sinai. There's a desert of Sinai. There's a mount of Sinai. And had pitched in the wilderness. And there Israel camped before the mount. So there's Mount Sinai. There they are pitched, tent, home, camped. And this is where Moses saw the burning bush. God has brought him right back to where he was. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mount. So, Israel's there, and this mountain speaks. Saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, no Ishmael. No question without it. And tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians. No question. It's God, Almighty God, Jehovah, what I did for you. You've seen what I've done. And how I bear you on eagles' wings. Eagles, plural. Eagles are most majestic flying creatures. And eagles are the highest living creature. Wait, wait, I'm saying that wrong. Eagles are the creature that are the highest they can ever be on their own. They go to the altitudes that no other living creature shall, can go. That's, so, the eagle has landed. Get out of my Bible if you don't believe in God. Of all the animals you could have called that thing, the eagle has landed. As far as where the, the eagles go, that's where man's domain is. From the eagle to where that frozen vast where God is, that's Satan's domain and principalities. And then you got heaven. That's the three heavens. He says, I have buried you on eagles' wings. Well, do you know what a mama would get quick with going on a quick with? You know what mama eagle will do with her eaglets? She'll put them on her back, fly off, and then drop them. And let them fall. And at the very last moment, she'll swoop down and, and pick them up and bring them back to the nest. And she'll keep doing that and keep doing that till those feathers of those eagle heads get stronger and stronger. And one day they start flapping and then they fly off. He's trying to build them up. He's trying to strengthen them. That's what he's doing. And brought, and brought you unto myself. I'm bringing you here for me. You're my people. Now, therefore, if, 
unconditional free will. There's no Calvinism about it. And I was talking to a gentleman today. We were having a great conversation, and it came to me. If Calvinism is true, you would not ever see the word if in your Bible. It's interesting. That if would be a demand or a you're damned. So if you obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, but one of them covenants is circumcision, that ye shall be a particular treasure, peculiar treasure. Treasure. In Matthew 13, 44, I believe it says, a man went and found the treasure and hid himself. Scripture was scripture. Jesus knew what he was saying. Unto me. So, in Israel, in the eyes of God, it's just gems, gold. Problem is, they've been soiled, they've been corroded, they've got impurities inside of them and we're going to see that in a minute above all people you got that Adolf Hitler understand that KKK understand that National Council for Colored People go ahead say whatever you want to say that Jewish person is above all the people in the world even today against rebel against God and the Messiah there's still God's people and Paul says I pray to peace in Jerusalem for all the earth is mine. And the rulership right now is Satan. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. There's your Roman Catholic Church trying to build a, a city, money, an army, stands, postal office, their own banking system. Telling America they, they, it ought not to build a wall with the Mexicans, yet it has a wall surrounding them. A holy nation. That's the Roman Catholic Church stealing from the Jews. The Campbellites do that. The Mormons are trying to do that. They're trying to build their own nation without Jesus Christ. There's, there's a hospital here. We see their commercial. It's like, oh, we're gonna get, we're gonna have pure cancer-free, and there'll be no, no child will have to worry about having cancer and their parent ever dying a kid. See, we're going to make things so perfect that when Jesus does come, he's going to pat us on the back and say, you did a good job. I'm going to go back to heaven and you take control of everything. And the Kenelite are a group, of, they say, I forget which tribe it is, like, the, the Mormons, they believe in Ephraim, that they're from the ancestry of the English people. And that every monarch is is, is crowned on this rock that, uh, I forget which, but they're just, they're just stealing from the Jewish people. Armstrong is, that's, that's not Kimberly, that's what, Armstrong. Just stealing from the promises of the Jews as the Catholic Church steal from the promises of the Jews. Listen, if you go over to the Holy City today and you go see where this tomb is and this is where Jesus did that and this is where Jesus did this and this is what Mary did here and they're all not biblical because they're Roman Catholic. And you got to ask yourself, okay, is, is this where Jesus died? Is it in Jerusalem or is it outside Jerusalem according to Hebrews? So, what do the Roman Catholics call their people who are in authority? Priests. And they have an army. And they have one ruler that sits on a seat, a, a, a throne. And they make laws. And they try to conquer the whole world in the name of Roman Catholicism. And we'll see that as we go with Israel. God will say, go into these nations and wipe them out because they're sinners. And I don't want you to have anything to do with them because they will get corrupted as the sinners are corrupted. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people, the rulers. 
and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do. Let's go to chapter 16, verse 19. And I'm going to show you in a minute. They spoke foolish. 16, 19. All right, yeah. And Moses said, Let no man leave of it till the morning. This is the manna. God said, No leftovers. Notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto Moses, but some of them left it until the morning, and it bred worms and stank. If they could not listen to Moses, and they're over here in verse 8, we will do everything that God has told us to do. You could not even obey the restrictions on the manna. And God said on the sixth day of the manna, gather twice as much. And when the Sabbath day came, there were out people out there trying to gather some. Now the proper response in verse 8 should have been, Lord, we need mercy, not the law. But they told God, we will do everything that was before hearing the laws. You got to be careful with what you say. The Moses returned the words of the people on the Lord. Lord, don't do whatever they tell you to tell them to do. Well, with 1619, it showed that Moses told them, don't keep it. And they did. And you can't keep that simple thing. You know how many laws we're going to see in Exodus and Leviticus? And, and when we get to Jeremiah, they're not doing nothing. And they turned against God to the Queen of Heaven. And the Lord said to Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord, unto sinners with no blood, it's darkness. There's no light. God is holy. God is righteous. These people are, are, are sinners. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Under Jesus Christ is, is a man who is a sinner, an Israelite. On the road to Damascus, it, does he get this great light because of Jesus? Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said to Moses, Go unto the people, and sanctify, set them apart. Sanctify them today and tomorrow. Take two days, and let them wash their clothes. <laughs> That's interesting, a little note in there. Sanctify and wash your clothes. And be ready against the third day. There's that third day again. That's an interesting little study in the Bible. For the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. Now this coming down is not bad. He came down to see the Tower of Babel and pronounce judgment upon that. He came down to see Sodom and Gomorrah and pronounce judgment upon that. Now he's coming down to talk to his people. Jesus came down to deal with the people. The next time Jesus comes down to earth is to get his people. Now I'm talking about the Jews. I'm not talking about the church. He doesn't come down to the earth to get the church. He meets us out here where the eagles are. That's an interesting little thing. And thou shalt set bonds unto the, unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves, 
that ye go not up into the mount or touch the border of it. Whosoever touches the mount shall be surely be put to death. There is a barrier around this mountain that Moses has to set up to say you can't cross this line. So the first yellow tape you ever see is not police line, it's God's line. I don't know the yellow tape, but this is a line. There shall not a hand touch it. You know, you want to go up. Ooh, let me touch it. Let, let me get a piece of dirt. Let me get a souvenir. But he shall surely be stoned. Capital punishment. If you do anything to this mountain while God's there. Piece of dirt. While God's there. Or shot through. Now, here's where your gun people have <laughs> shot through. You know, see that? In the Bible, that would be with an arrow or a spear kind of thing. And you check that references, we'll see them. We'll have uh, Jonathan goes out with his air, armor bearer and shoots three arrows. A prophet goes to the king and says, shoot some arrows out the window. Man, you should shot them all, you'll be delivered from this enemy. But since you only shot it three times, whether it be beast or man, you better tie up your animals. You better put your control on hand. It shall not live. When the trumpet sounds this long. Now, this is no here. This may be the Feast of Trumpets. We may be at the Feast of Trumpets. That's not the church. No, don't go run back to it. Oh, see, there's the rapture. You know, no, no, no. Sounds long. Ours says when the trump will be blown by the angel. We don't know how long it's going to be long. It says when it's blown. When the sound is long. Do you know what one of the signs and seals of the tribulation period is? It's seven trumpets with angels. Wouldn't it be interesting if the Jews are out in the tribulation period, they're running for their life, and they get a hold of, this, of the book of Moses, they open up the Exodus, and they come to the part where the Trump sounds long. After reading about Egypt and all the plagues that are amassed, they shall come up to the mount. And Moses went down. So Moses Moses going up and down. Up. You know he's over 80 years old, you know. And Moses went down from the mount unto the people. And sanctified the people. Set them apart. Set them for God. For use. And they washed their clothes. What do you think? Do your hands need to touch that? Then get your hands off it. Does your... Does that need to be in your mouth? Get it out of your mouth. Does that need to be in your heart? Get it out. Does that need to be in your thoughts? Get it out. He's cleaning the people. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day. Come not at your wives. Here's one of the places he said, Listen, Two days clean yourself, three days God's come, and even amongst this time have no marriage bad relations. You and your wife get down and pray to God and get right. You find that in Corinthians. Okay. Um, with David also when he went and got and he asked him if any of the men were gonna be with a woman. Yep, that's yeah, the priest did. And they gave him the showbread. There are some times in the marriage bed relations, hey, listen, you know what? And Paul warns, we're going to fast this event. But Paul also warns, but be careful because Satan will be around the corner. Fasting is not always eating and drinking, my friends. And it came to pass on the third day, in the morning, now where's that reference? 
That's the second advent in the morning. We are the dark. We are the night, the church age. Period. Think of the sun coming up. That sun coming up is the Lord Jesus Christ coming. The Bible speaks of him as that day star that rises before the sunrise. When you go watch the sunrise, before it rises, you'll see a star. An early morning star. That's Jesus coming. That's as far he's he's approaching. The, the, the light at the end of the tunnel is not a train, it's Jesus. Then when that sun comes up, the sun comes up. People worship the sunrise service. They think they're worshiping God, but they're not. In the morning, and there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount. And the voice of the, the voice of the trumpet. The trumpet has a voice. Exceedingly loud. Matthew 24. So that all the people that was in the camp trembled. And I bet they did. Now. You ever have a thunderstorm. And the thunder rocks your house. You imagine what this is going to do. It's shaking the whole mountain. This is a volcanic mountain. That does not have any lava. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. How's that? Pastor, you bring your people out to meet God? I hope you have sanctified yourselves. Because God won't come in. Don't come in worldly goods. Don't bring little kitties in to bring to God if you haven't sanctified them from the world yet. By using worldly means. And they stood at the neither, which is the lower part of the mount. So they're at the bottom, they're at the base of this mountain. And Mount Sinai was all together on a smoke. Now look at it, on a smoke. It's one smoke. Because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Our God's a consuming fire. And they say they found, some people say they found this mountain and it's got the marks of fire. And the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace. And the whole mount quaked, quaked greatly. Now here comes God. Well, show me God. You don't want to see God. Just look what he shows up at. It shows as a big weather phenomenon with an earthquake. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses thank and God answered him by a voice. And the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai. Do you really think that by calling the Mount Sinai, New York, and you know, you're holy and baloney and all that. America has stolen the names out of the Bible, don't even know what the names of the places are. By the way, a lot of these names are also in, as I said before, they're in England. You know, stealing from the Jews, stealing from the Bible. Only the morons will, morons will call out names that you don't even see anywhere in the world. Moses spake, and God answered by a voice. And the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai, upon the top of the mount. And the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mount, and Moses went up. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Like, you know, God, can't you put an elevator in this thing? <laughs> And the Lord said to Moses, Go down. Hi, <laughs> God. Go down. Uh, Moses did not complain at all, did he? What if God said that to you? Come on up. All right, great. Now go down. You're American. You get upset. What did you call me all the way up here for? Just spoke to me down there. You know? Go down. And charge the people, lest they break through unto the Lord to gaze, and many of them perish. 
you gotta stop them, Moses. They're, they're getting too much into curiosity, and curiosity killed the cat. Almost like the people are caused God to say, oh, Moses, you gotta get down there. Because when Aaron makes that golden calf, God tells Moses, you gotta get down there. When your congregation are involved in sins, Pastor, you ought to get down to the people and get it right with God. You need to be with your congregation. Your congregation. Go on down. Charge the people as they break through to the Lord to gain. And many of them perish. This, but doesn't that sound good to me? They're, they're showing an atmosphere to God. Hey, we want to get closer to God. He's too holy for you to get close as you are right now. You realize if we popped into heaven right now as we are today, our bodies would, could not handle God. We would burn off. That's why we got to get a new body. That's why we got to have a change. That's why we got to be judged at the judgment seat of Christ before we appear before God. We got to have all that sin removed. And let the priest, uh-oh, there are priests before the Levitical priesthood. There are, are men in Israel called priests. They have set themselves up to worship God. In a few chapters, God's going to change all that. There are no Levitical priests now, right now, where we are. There are priests, but there are no Levitical priests at all. And I wonder if some of them are going to get upset because they're going to lose their job. Maybe. Maybe they were Levites. I don't know. But as far as a Levitical priesthood set up by God, you have not found anything yet as we study from Genesis 1 to Exodus 19. These are... I don't want to say they're not a Levite because we don't know. These are priests not before the office of priesthood. Which come near to the Lord. Notice the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. That's Jehovah, Yahweh. Sanctify themselves. They already did. They spent two days sanctifying themselves. Have these priests sanctify themselves even more. So you're not clean enough. You, me, are not clean enough. No way. Don't think you're perfect enough that God's going to, you know, no. All have sinned. All have sinned. All have sinned. Even under the blood of Jesus Christ, I am still a sinner. I am seated in heavenly places, but not in this body yet. At least the Lord breaks through upon them. <laughs> you know, he does something to them. You guys better sanctify yourselves. Or, you don't want God to deal with you as a sinner. That's what it's saying. You don't want God to deal with you unclean. And this is not a holy clean where they're, they're perfect because they still got limitations. Moses said unto the Lord, this, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for thou chargest us, saying, Set bounds about the mount and sanctify them. God, you can't bring them up. This is what you said. Moses is quoting God. And if you've got a true case with God, and you can quote the Bible, you better quote it correctly, because Moses said, hey, God, you told me to bring them, but you told me not to bring them up. I mean, what do you really want me to do, Lord? And the Lord said unto him, Away, get thee down, and thou shalt come up, thou and Aaron with thee. Okay, not all the people. 
You see the you see the now guy okay. I want you and Aaron up here. But let not the priests and the people break through to come up unto the Lord, lest he bring forth upon them. Alright. Moses did a very good job here protecting the people. God, you told me to bring the people up, but I can't bring the people up. Get down. Go get Aaron and you come up. Leave everybody else. So Moses went down unto the people and spake unto them. And then we're going to break into the law. The oral law. Ten commandments. We'll break for it, Lord willing, maybe tomorrow night. Ten commandments. God will speak them. They will hear from the mouth the word of God. Now, can you imagine when we get to chapter 30, 20? God is on the mount. He is speaking to the children of God, an oral, oral voice that all can hear. I can imagine, I mean, my years of preaching on the street, I can imagine somebody walking up to God and saying, Get you down. That's not how God. Oh, yeah, okay, that's how you do it. And Exodus 20 is one of those things, well, you're just too loud. That's How did God do it? You think God spoke in the mouth? I don't think God spoke like that. Not for all the, the children of Israel to hear. And with the thunderings and the trumpets sounding, I guarantee God's voice reached out far and wide. For what? For the people to know what God expected from them. Now, in the church age, God says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Tell them. If you have to, be loud. Be loud. 